getting into the last several days of June and just about into the dog days of summer. And with that, some Saharan dust on the satellite image there in the southern Atlantic. Some of that is sun glint, which is reflection off the ocean, but you can tell the difference because the sun glint moves rapidly. By contrast, not very much movement on that Saharan dust. And let's take a look at that surface map. We've got a polar front moving through the northeastern U.S. and the Midwest, producing quite a bit of precipitation from Lake Ontario down into the Ohio River Valley. Not much cooling behind that. Temperatures in the 80s this afternoon, but as you go north, we do get into those 70s and 60s. If we go back to yesterday evening, numerous thunderstorms across Omaha, Des Moines, all the way back into central Nebraska. A few tornadoes reported with this. Going into the overnight hours, these consolidated into an MCS that moved southward through Kansas City, Columbia, producing wind damage into the Ozarks early this morning. And they continued on into Arkansas, Oklahoma, and even into northeast Texas. The western fringes of that MCS have mostly died out, but out east where we have considerable moisture, lots of heavy rain falling around Memphis, Nashville, and Louisville. Some of that is in part due to the very high precipitable water running about 2 to 2.5 inches from Mississippi up into western Kentucky, and a very broad area of 1.5 and 2-inch amounts all across the southern U.S., right up the Ohio River Valley. And you'll notice out in the southwestern U.S., 1.5 to 2 inches all the way to Phoenix, Yuma, and San Diego. That's due in part to the remnants of Tropical Storm Alberto that we had last week. A lot of that moisture influx still hanging on across the desert regions. Dew points are up into the 60s in the lower deserts, but the only areas getting thunderstorms are in the mountains. The reason for that, the subtropical high settling in across the southwestern region. The minus 5 isotherm extending all the way up into Utah and Colorado that places this entire area at about minus 3 to minus 4 at 500 millibars. So the lapse rate's not really conducive to thunderstorm formation. There's the forecast sounding out of Yuma. That's a inverted V profile. We do have moisture in the lower levels, but this is really not enough to support widespread thunderstorms in the deserts. In the northeastern U.S., cold front moving through New York and Pennsylvania, SPC does have a slight risk of severe thunderstorms all through the northeast, south of Buffalo to Boston, all the way down to Virginia. Temperatures this afternoon running almost 90 degrees at Boston. 81 there at JFK. It looks like the sea breeze might have moved through. And we've got 95 in Philadelphia. There are heat advisories all through the Philadelphia area into New Jersey, but out to the west, Numerous thunderstorms in central Pennsylvania, dropping that temperature down to 74 at Williamsport. Heading into the southeast, we pick up heat advisories all through the Carolinas from Raleigh down to Columbia. At this hour, we've got 102 at Columbia. Earlier, it was 102 at Raleigh-Durham, but they're down to 100. Atlanta, coming close to 100 degrees, but as you go south, we do get into some of that precipitation in southern Georgia, providing some welcome relief down in Valdosta. The typical summertime thunderstorms in central Florida, not a very good time of the year to visit Disney World. 83 degrees there with thunderstorms, and we pick up more of them across Alabama and Mississippi as we get closer to that other frontal boundary. And driving that front is this 10, 17 millibar high across Manitoba. Temperatures there in the 40s and 50s this afternoon. So there is a welcome break to that rain in Minnesota. Numerous rivers and creeks are at bank full or flooding, including the Mississippi River, which is under a flood warning. With that upslope flow in Nebraska into Wyoming, we do have a slight risk of severe thunderstorms in the central high plains, including Cheyenne, 
Denver, and Trinidad. There's a look at one of those thunderstorms west of Springfield. This air mass here, temperatures running about 96, dew points about 53. So there is some fuel for the storms, the main threat being high winds. Some other cells around the Denver area. There's the Denver radar. Not a whole lot there, but the cells are coming off the front range and should be in the metro area over the next hour or so. And we can see some other distant cells further up north towards Cheyenne, Chugwater, and Douglas. An interesting bit of climatology. Yesterday, Denver's overnight low was 68. Cheyenne was 65, and those were the warmest for the date. Okay, let's take a quick look out west. You can see that the pressure gradient has tightened out there in Oregon, and they do have red flag warnings for the interior regions, mostly around Burns down to Lakeview and all the way down towards Reno. So there is some fire risk there. There could be a few thunderstorms in the Cascades and just to the east that could touch off some lightning-induced wildfires. Heading up north into Alaska, some very warm weather along the Brooks Range, temperatures approaching 80 degrees. And we've even got 68 degrees there south of Barrow. Barrow itself reporting 63. Let's take a look up there, look at the updated data. Yeah, look at that. They're actually up to 66 and very close to the Arctic Ocean, 77 degrees at the town of Newark Suit. 63 at Dead Horse at the terminus of the Alaska Pipeline. Checking out northern Canada, still in the 30s. They've been running below normal for much of the summer. I have not really seen 50s, and they do tend to get that this time of year. Also rather cool in the Northwest Territories, looking at the 40s for this afternoon, and cold all the way down into the prairies, where we also have 40s. That would be pretty nice. Wish, wish we could push that all the way to Texas, but of course, that'll never happen. Quebec also looking pretty cold. They've broken that heat wave. Temperatures were up into the 90s around Moosonee last week. No warnings out east, but in the western part of Canada, some rainfall warnings in the foothills of the Rockies. And we've also got a severe thunderstorm watch for parts of the British Columbian interior, Kelowna, Vernon and Kamloops in that watch. Okay, let's start looking more at the forecast. And we're going to look at this 500 millibar chart. You can see I've got this configured a little bit differently from the usual maps. I've modeled them off of the daily weather map series. Looks familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure a lot of you have seen these historical maps. I wanted to kind of go for that same appearance. So these are very unique and there's nowhere else on the internet or anywhere you will find these. So let's take a look. Yeah, we've got that subtropical ridge across New Mexico. Not enough to completely shut down that monsoon activity. There's just been that sheer volume of moisture spreading into the southern Rockies. A very active Hudson Bay low. That's one reason it's so cold in many parts of Canada. Got that strong northerly flow coming south. And we've got a long wave ridge in position across the western U.S., broken up by this deep trough off of the northwest coast. So let's put the maps into motion. We can see that the pattern is progressive. We've got that trough coming on shore with that enhanced flow and colder upper-level conditions moving into the Pacific Northwest. The ridge across the northwest moves into the northern plains, so there will be some warm weather for parts of the Dakotas later in the week. And we go into the weekend, things just keep on moving to the east. The subtropical high remains positioned across Texas. So a continuation of the hot weather in that part of the country, ridging, building back in for the northern Rockies over the weekend. So continued warm there as well. And more troughing starting to move inland this weekend. And we'll take you into early next week. Just kind of a continuation of that stagnant pattern. You can see the subtropical high across Texas and just a series of troughs moving west to east across the northern tier states and this little cutoff low off of Cape Cod 
and that's about it. So it's going to be active up north and rather stagnant down in the southern states. So let's take a look at that forecast starting with 7 p.m. this evening. You can see that there is some error in the models as far as the mesoscale detail. You can see right there, it's got that MCS moving through Arkansas. Well, that already happened a couple hours ago, maybe even further back. So these global models do not do very well with the mesoscale details, but the larger scale picture, they are reasonably accurate. So we're going to mostly focus on that. And we do see a lot of convection throughout the Rockies associated with that monsoon flow. And there's a little bit of tightening gradient up to the northwest. That's going to be that new surge of cold air coming into the Pacific Northwest. And there's that other MCS up there in the northeastern states. So let's carry it forward into the overnight hours and into tomorrow. Looks active in the central plains. Looks like some of those storms in the high plains moves out into the corn belt. And I guess that would be the wheat belt. Not sure what they grow there in South Dakota. I know it becomes barley as you go north. Anyway, Thursday, tomorrow afternoon, this is how it looks. Stagnant frontal boundary across the south. New frontal system in the northern plains. The Storm Prediction Center calling for an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms in the northern high plains. Looking at Minot, Miles City, down to Rapid City, close to this warm front. All hazards are possible with the main concern being high winds. There could be some discrete supercells, and anywhere that happens, we could have that large hail and a few tornadoes. There is a slight risk of excessive rainfall for much of the Colorado Rockies and much of northwestern New Mexico as those storms get forming. That monsoon moisture continues yet another day. And continued hot in the southwest, temperatures up to 110 at Las Vegas. And as we go into Thursday evening, you can see that thunderstorm activity developing near that warm front. Go into the overnight hours, this indicates an MCS moving across Nebraska, Kansas. That's probably responsible for some of that slight risk, excessive rainfall outlook. Then we go into Friday. This is how it looks during the evening, an occlusion up to the north and the active polar front down into Kansas. Looking for a slight risk of severe thunderstorms in central and southeastern Iowa down into northern Missouri. That's near that warm front right there. We go into the evening hours. It does look like the activity is somewhat scattered. Another MCS developing on the High Plains, central Nebraska down into the Goodland area. So more rain possible throughout much of this region right there. The Southern Plains continued hot, looking for 105 at Enid, 102 at Oklahoma City, 104 at Wichita Falls, and 101 at Wichita. So a very hot day in that part of the country. Going into Saturday, the cold front moves southward and began stalling out right there. Looking for temperatures up to 100 degrees at Dallas, 102 at Wichita Falls. Then for Sunday, a continuation of that stagnant front right there in the southern plains. Looking for another 100-degree day in Dallas up to 102 west of Fort Worth. And the heat picking up a little bit in the southwestern deserts up to 111 at Phoenix with 103 at Tucson. And there are some indications that another monsoon surge will develop later on Sunday. Precipitation chances go up to 70% around Douglas on Sunday and Monday. Yeah, there it is right there, breaking out on the GFS model. And we go into midweek. As we said, progressive pattern, systems going west to east, and that drops those fronts into the central U.S. Typically, they don't go any further south unless we have a major amplified wave in the upper levels. So, yes, it will be a little bit stagnant over the next week or so. The National Hurricane Center calling for a possibility of development down there in the southern Atlantic. The Cape Verde storm track is becoming active. Let's take a look at the integrated vapor transport, the flow, the pressure out there in the Gulf and the Caribbean. And we do see another tropical surge coming into the Gulf towards the weekend. This stays well to the south. May see a little bit of cyclogenesis out there in the Bay of Campeche this weekend. Then we focus out to the east. 
and we see another strong disturbance coming in. This could be a tropical storm or maybe a hurricane. It's too early to tell, but this goes well south into the Caribbean. Not much possibility of that coming up into the Gulf. This looks even stronger. This gets into later next week. So this will give us some stuff to keep an eye on as we go into late next week. Well, the weather is slowing down a little bit. So how about an Earth Sciences GeoGuessr? This is a place that holds a specific climatological record for the United States. It's held it for decades. The first person in YouTube comments that guesses correctly where this is will receive a signed copy of Weather Forecasting Red Book. Only in the US though. One guess per person. If you're sure of where this is, educate us and explain why it is important meteorologically. The answer will be revealed on Friday. I'm pretty familiar with doing these, so I've allowed a few minor clues elsewhere. Otherwise, you're gonna be hunting through 10,000 different towns. So you may get some clues from the things that you see, the buildings, the architecture, the trees, and the terrain. So if you think you know where this is, post in YouTube and let us know. All right, so that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. We'll close out with some footage. Thanks to Greg. Some views out there in the Texas Hill Country, spectacular as usual. You can see how green everything is. They've had a lot of rain over the past couple months. All right, hope you have a great Wednesday evening. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.